Divine Truth Assistance Group Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the session 2 Reminders and Homework Review presentation, Jesus works through reminders from the previous Analyze My Fear of Love and Change session and reviews the homework of the participants. Recorded on the 26th of February 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Do you have a good day off? Yeah. yeah, I was busy. I had to do a number of things to look after myself. So I had to go shopping and washing and a few things like that. So it's a good day, a good day for me. Good to have a break day for me because it's uh, you're talking ten hours over two days. You sort of feel like don't want to talk anymore for for a day, and then after the day's gone past, you think, oh, I'm ready to talk again. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, yeah. Been lovely days, haven't they? Lovely days. It's almost a pity to be inside today, isn't it? Such a lovely day outside. Apparently, Winston's going to come through and make it all blowy. Make it all blowy and cloudy. Yeah. Pretty soon, I think, by the weekend, probably. Yeah. So, might be pouring with rain for a few days <laughs> after that. Hopefully, it'll fine up for the next group. Yeah. All right, well, today what we're going to do firstly, obviously, is a revision, just like we have the previous days. So we're going to do a revision this morning. And the topic of the previous two days, remember, what was my resistance to love and change. So that's what we're going to revise. And then what we're going to do is focus our attention on the positive aspects of developing your will. And, you know, to me, the, this day to that today is probably the most important day of the whole of the whole group because you you learn more about the use of your will the gi the gift itself and how you use it and also how to in enhance it and how to degrade it as well so so it's a it's a great uh, there's great topics of discussion today my only concern today is that uh, there's so much material that i don't know how i'm going to go keeping on time so so we'll see how we go with that. What, what we'll do if I can't uh, cover all the material is we probably will sort of go in, over time a little with the first part of the session and then the question and answer part of the session we'll just have to shorten that um, is probably what we'll do to try and keep in our time today. But uh, the main reason why I want to make sure that this material is covered is because it, it, it's a key part of you understanding this gift that you've been given and a key part of your development. So, so yeah, if, if there's any day that you want to really fo focus on, again, it's today, really, because it's going to clarify most of the things regarding the development of, will, of your will. So, so let's get started firstly, though, in our revision, shall we? So our revision of the issue of my resistance to love and change, we learnt that there were four primary resistances to love and change. What were they? So if we come down to Fab on this side, across to Rachel on the other. I'll just say one of them, is it faith? Just say one, yeah, yeah, faith. So faith. And it's really my desire to remain in a lack of faith, isn't it, that causes the resistance. So the faith itself is going to overcome the resistance and it's the desire to remain in a lack of it that causes me to remain in resistance. Uh, Rachel? A lack of openness to truth. Right, so it's my, so my resistance to truth, and it's a, and, and you, or you could say the lack of desire for truth, but let's call it resistance to truth, is the next one that uh, causes us a lot of trouble. In fact, those two are, whenever you're stuck, no matter how much fear you have, whenever you're stuck, it's usually because of one of those two reasons or both. 
it's because you're not wanting to face the truth or it's because you just don't want to have faith that, that if you work through a certain thing things will get better afterwards all right and then we have uh, the third one that we went through if we go back to Denise over there and over here and the fourth one will be for this one so if we go right up the back to the rule thanks a lack of action a lack of action so so that uh, stops us from Uh, that makes us get stuck when it comes to the exercise of our will. And the last one, Will? A fear of feeling painful emotions. Yeah, so it's a real deep lack of desire or fear of emotion. And you could also say with regard to the action one that it's primarily a fear of action, isn't it? That causes that. Um, that's the main reason why we don't act. You could also say, though, that there are many times, as we'll learn today, that we actually take actions that are out of harmony with love. They, they cause a, a lack of will also. So today we'll be learning more about these particular things that prevent the proper development of our will. But they are the four things that really inhibit your passionate desire to do anything. Now, what did we learn about them? So with regard to faith... It can, do we have to stay in a lack of faith? No. So what, what, what could we choose to do instead? If we come down to Neil, what could we choose to do instead of remaining in this lack? Um, because it can be developed, we can develop it. We can choose to develop it. We can it. choose to develop it. Yeah, we, yeah. Can, we can make choices and decisions that are going to help the development of it, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, with regard to truth, what would be a better attitude to resisting it than resisting it? If we go to Karina, thanks. Be madly open to it. Yeah, you want to be in love with truth, right? It's a, it's a beautiful thing, truth. It's a primary thing that will cause your eternal growth. And God's got an infinite amount of it, and as much of it you can absorb as possible, it's going to benefit you immensely. All right. Now what happens with action? We are afraid of action, but, but what do we tell ourselves with regard to action? What, what's our primary, what, what do we primarily feed ourselves with with regard to that concept of acting? If we go back to Rachel and then perhaps straight behind you to Rita. That if we take the action, the thing that we're afraid of will happen? Yes, so we believe our fear, and remember, so our fear becomes our truth. Remember that was the relationship? The fear becomes our truth, and then we call it our truth, which is a, a misnomer. It's really our fear. It's our false beliefs appearing real to us. And the problem with that is that if we act, continually act upon them, we come to believe them and solidify them as well, don't we? So that's a big problem. Rita, you like to... It's basically the same. Everything will be worse than ever before if I act. Yes. So the things that have happened in my past will definitely uh, happen again, is the belief we have. And the irony is that while we retain that emotion, that's highly likely. That's also an ir ir the irony is that it's highly likely that the things we that have happened in our past may happen again if we continue to retain the emotion of the past. And remember we gave the illustration of a child and, and learning to walk. And what, what was the pr basic lesson that we had from that? The child learning to walk. If we come down to Sherry and maybe across to Ella, Ella Louisa as well. Just on this side. Eloise, if you keep your hand up. Sherry, thanks. That when you, like when the child learns to walk and they take that action, if mm. they fall, they cry, they feel their emotions. So they let go of the hurt. They let go of the hurt of taking the action yeah. and then do it again. They do it again immediately. Yes. So, so they don't wait a week or two and go, oh, that was a bit hard to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's bang, straight back up again, isn't it, as soon as they finish crying. Yeah. I think it's covered. Yeah, so, so bearing that in mind... Um, how should we be acting when it comes to our emo you know, emotions and so forth, do you feel? If we, if we're, if we see that pattern, what, what do we need to remember? Because it's a childhood pattern that we had. We actually had it at some point. 
So, so what do we do about that? If we go to Yvonne, thanks. Mm. Um, feel our pain and get up and give it another go. Yes, so don't let the fact that you had the previous experience affect the next experience. And the way you deal with that is by releasing the, the pain of the previous experience fully. And remember, I applied that for many of you ladies who are, who are single. You've had relationship, a few relationships potentially. A lot, some of them felt harmful or hurt, felt too hurtful to you. And as a result of that, now you don't want to engage another. And that's because of not releasing the pain of the past. Uh, it's quite clear that the pain of the past is still influencing your future choices and decisions. Yeah. Now, when we're stuck with regard to the use of our will, the primary thing we need to bear in mind is that it usually is for one of those four reasons. Now, when we focused on emotion a couple of days ago, you could see that that is a key part because if we, if we don't let go of past emotion, we will carry it around and it will determine our next course of action. Right? That, that is it. So that is a big part. We need to learn how to release emotion. And so we, know, we need to stop seeing emotion as that important. Now, what do I mean by that? You see, for, for many of you, what you're doing is you, you are basically believing that having to feel the emotion is the end of the world, so therefore you're placing such a high importance on the emotion itself and preventing the emotion that you won't allow yourself to experience it. Now, to me, it's just like, it's just an emotion. Like, terror, just an emotion. Fear, just an emotion. Shame, just an emotion. They're all just emotions. I don't have to act upon them. I need to feel them. Many of you, when you start feeling an emotion, you stop choosing to feel it and then you choose to act upon it instead. And that's where m much of your will gets impeded in the right direction. So you finish up acting upon the damaged emotions, which unfortunately is just going to cause more damage. Right, so it's very important to see that. Many of you too have been stuck for quite a while in terms of your progress and one of the primary reasons why you're stuck for quite a while is because of this refusal to feel emotion. That, that causes you to get stuck. But what I'm saying to you is that if you develop your faith and you have less resistance to truth and you take actions, it's going to be much, much harder for you to avoid emotion, which will be a good thing. Right? But it require, some of these require positive input from you. No one else is responsible for the development of any of these particular qualities like faith and desire for truth and taking action and desire to feel emotion. All of those particular things that you could choose to do has to be exercised by your will. So interestingly enough, our progress, if it's not happening, is determined by our will, but, but there's these particular things that are also affecting negatively us using our will in a positive direction so that we can progress. So you can see that if you can do the opposite in each case, then of course progress is inevitable. In fact, just like with a child, progress is inevitable they will inevitably progress with regard to their physical welfare. And the reason why is because they look around at everyone else's doing things that they can't do, and so that draws them into desiring to do those particular things, and as a result of their desire, which is their will being positively expressed, they take action even though there's potential pain involved, they take action, they have some faith that if they take this action, the result will be the same result as what everyone, the grown-ups all have, you know. They can all walk, so I should be able to walk, is the, is the feeling in the child. And so, so the child takes the action, and the child has faith that that action will bring the outcome. The child doesn't tell itself the truth that every time it falls over that it's, that it's useless and it's bad and, and, and it's never going to get it, because it has examples all around it that everybody in its whole adult you know, in exper experience, well, experience with adults, every one of those adults walk, right? unless they're wheelchair banned or something, uh, every one of them walk. So, so this tells them that, ah, oh, well, you know, even if I fall over, 
it's probably because I need to learn something more so I can walk. And so this is where faith drives their action and they also see the truth in their heart without even having to think about it, do they, in that place. And they take action and as I said, they let go of the emotional experiences of the pain of what occurred so that very next moment after they've released that particular pain, they get up and take the action again. And this is a great way of learning. And we as adults give it up. And why do we do that? Why do we give it up? If we come to Ange and then across to Christine. Uh, basically because we refuse to feel the pain. Yes, but that's not the only reason why. And, and because our faith has been destroyed. It has? By... Lie, yeah. And that's not the only reason, though, is it? There's a whole slew of reasons, isn't there? So if we go across to Christine. Um, fear of making a mistake. Fear of making mistakes. That's yeah. a big thing for many of us, isn't it? Looking stupid. Looking stupid. How the world sees us. Yeah. Big problem for us, isn't it? We're we constantly analysing how we're going in our own life by other people's opinion. <laughs> yeah. The problem with that, of course, is that everybody's opinion is uneducated in love so of course they're going to judge us based on that lack of education they have and if I start accepting that as my basis for progress or no progress then of course I'll end up exactly where they are which is why we end up that way yeah yeah so can you see there's a lot of things that we can choose to change and, and one of the things you're starting to get the hang of in this, in this series of this opening sort of s s sessions that we're doing regarding our education and love is that actually a lot of this doesn't depend on the injuries that I have. It doesn't depend on the background I have or the training that I have or any of these pre-programming pre the pre -programming that I have, even my wiring in my brain. It doesn't really, because all of these things can change. It just depends on the fact of whether I want them to change enough and I understand the basic principles of change. Right? That's really, really what it gets down to. In other words, it gets down to the positive expression of our will. Yeah. So you were then asked to, to do some homework on that particular issue, those particular issues. Your first line of homework was, how am I demonstrating the living by faith in my daily life? Now, who, who thought that they weren't living by faith in all in their daily life? Is it? Yeah? I can't agree. You're just living by faith in physical things. That's what you're doing. So, so there's an aspect of your life where the physical aspect of your life, you live by faith very frequently, right? Don't you? Like, you so, you, you know, you, you get up in the morning and you, and you don't think, oh, maybe I've lost the uh, concept of how to walk. You know, like as soon as you get out of bed, you have faith that you're still able to walk, so you get up. And then, and then you, you, know, you, go, you go out and you jump in the car and you haven't lost the faith that you can drive the thing. Right, and you, and when you drive it, you're driving this missile down a road. It's like <laughs> a ton and a half, or whatever it is, missile down the road at speeds that are, you know, not maybe not the same speed as a missile, but but they're still pretty intense speeds in terms of the potential damage it can do to you. But you feel pretty comfortable that you you not only have faith that you'll stay on your side of the road, but you even have faith that other people who you don't even know will stay on theirs. So um, so obviously. You know, there are a lot of areas where you are exercising faith every single day. They're just not to do with your spiritual and emotional life. They're only to do with your physical life. That's, that's the issue with faith. Okay, so, so what did you learn about faith with regard to your spiritual or emotional side of your life? Were, were, how do you feel about faith in that regard? Right, so if we come to Eloisa... And if we go up the back to, ah yes, uh, so right up the back again. Yeah. Um, I noticed that I didn't have much, but I kind of hadn't really thought about it. And the cool thing with what you've been sharing with us is that I can grow it. And that was a really, 
I got a bit depressed thinking about it. And yeah. then I was like, not depressed, but like, oh. And then I was like, no, nope. yeah, I can grow up. Yeah. And that, that's a really cool thing for me. Yeah. yeah. So while you feel you haven't been using it much in your life, no. you're realising that, wow, like it, it is something that I can change, that, that particular problem. Yeah, and also that, that some of the other areas I'm not so down in, and I obviously <coughs> have an inkling of getting yep. down on myself rather than looking at the positive bits. But that was like all of these places can be grown, like all of these things can be cultivated. Yeah. And I just haven't, like I just haven't thought about them. Yeah. Even though I know this is a crux of the stuff you teach, I yeah. just haven't, I've been all absorbed in emotions or, I don't know, yeah. crap. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, many of you would have felt that way, right? We've sort of been feeling like there's a whole, like there's, you've been focusing primarily, many of you, on emotion without actually seeing that actually unless you know the truth you're not going to feel an emotion unless you have some faith that you can actually deal with your emotions you're probably not going to feel an emotion unless you take some action in your daily life you're probably not going to feel an emotion but let's try to access our emotions <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> so the biggest coolest part was though about god and yeah. i know i said that yesterday like yeah. i am the only thing between me and my relationship with god yeah. and that is for me massive yeah and it's the same my only thing between me and faith my only thing between is me and truth yeah Everything. and this is a very key thing to bear in mind i feel that it is the only thing you are the only thing preventing a relationship so when a relationship is not happening with god and by the way you're the only thing generally you know preventing the relationship even with other people but see other people are out of harmony with love so they there's the, you know that's not strictly true you've got to do your part but even if you do your part there's no guaranteed in a relationship with somebody else that they're going to do their part but with god there's a guarantee like God's already doing his part, so what am I doing in terms of my part? And this is what makes a relationship with God much easier than a relationship with a person. Yeah. Because, a, because a relationship with people requires that they do their part, whereas a relationship with God requires that only I do my part, God's already doing. And, you know, I can be guaranteed that God's already doing And that was part. really exciting for me because I was like, whoa, like God already likes me. You know? He's just sitting there going, come on, Eloisa, like, yeah. come and play with me or yeah. come and do this. So I'd show you all this cool stuff and I'm like, yeah. where's God? Like, come on, where is I'm waiting? Yeah. When, and this is the problem. We, we often have the attitude is where's God yeah. when the real problem is where's us? Where, where, where are we? You know, like that's the real problem. And that's what I see people saying all the time. And particularly people who've read Paget messages over many years are doing that with themselves frequently. They are often saying to themselves, well, you know, I pray every day, but I still don't feel like the progression that, you know, Jesus describes in the Paget messages will actually happen. And, and, and and it hasn't happened to me that way. And then they try to fool themselves that it has happened when it hasn't happened. And then they, later on they realise it probably hasn't happened, you know. And then, and, and then they wonder, well, what's God doing about it? Well, it can't be me. <laughs> and that's a very arrogant position, actually, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it's quite sad. It is quite sad that we maintain that. We, we maintain the arrogance that, that if there's a problem between our relationship with God, that it's got to be God's fault. Yeah. yeah not our own, you know. Yeah. So Tess, you haven't forgotten your... <laughs> um, I think so, but I'm not sure if it's relevant. Yeah. But it, um, I found that I prioritise everything to do with just the physical world and work, and it's tied into my worth, and yep. that's where I'm getting my worth from, being productive and things like that. That's an excellent point. We, we, this is why we have faith in our physical life and we exercise faith in our physical life is because a lot of our emotional injuries are tied into making things happen in our physical life. Right. And when I say emotional injuries, oftentimes it's that we, you know, we learnt, didn't we, over those period of two days, the linkage between worth and other issues is a major problem. So when we're linking our worth to staying in a place of falsehood, then basically when someone presents our truth, we feel that presents God's truth to us. We, we feel that they're tearing down our worth, right? And, and the same applies to many other emotions, doesn't it? And, and so we end up doing, running around busily in our physical state, doing all these physical things, hoping that there will be some kind of change in our spiritual and emotional life and even change in our happiness when that's not going to be the source of change in our happiness 
And this is a problem that we face as well. So we're sort of deluding ourselves to a large degree, aren't we? We're thinking that if we just work a bit harder and a bit smarter and we do a bit more and we do this a bit better and we, and we get more perfect physically, we think the outcome is going to be I'll be happy and content and satisfied and, and I'll actually be closer to God. But, but that's not actually true because there's still all of the, the, the spiritual and emotional side of our life hasn't, ha hasn't taken any change. And this is where I feel many of you are still addicted to getting the physical part of your life sorted because it does feed a lot of unhealed emotional addictions and feeds your facade and so you want to keep doing it but you're going to have to change that if you really want to understand the exercise of your will and and particularly if you want to get an education in love and get closer to God yeah so that's a very good point so Kelly this one. yeah definitely everything you've just um, said about faith but the other part for me is I love the experimenting in yep. my day yep. and the watching what I'm doing and watching how I respond to situations and, yep. you know, just feeling, it's just the experimenting and seeing what the outcome is and what the results are from me feeling an emotion or, or taking an action or not. Yep. And um, so I love the, the, yeah, the experiment and the investigation of myself and my life with others etc yeah. Yeah. yeah so i enjoy that you that can in, you can enjoy it yeah. quite a lot actually yeah i need to enjoy it a lot more <laughs> yeah yeah instead of being frightened of it yeah so with regard to faith um most of you would it be accurate to say most of you felt that you haven't been exercising much but you felt quite positive that you could actually do some things to change that yeah so that's good and did you find too that um, with regard to faith, you're, you're always, um, it's almost like you're putting off faith. How many of you found that, that you're sort of putting off having faith because it helps you avoid a whole heap of things if you do that? Yeah, yeah. So, Lorlene, you want? Um, with all of them, but um, I, I found that... Um, I've used my intellect, my mind, so much that it just dictates to survive. I've just brought it all away and I tell myself, I've talked myself out of all of those things. Just, mm. just talk myself out. There's mm. no faith, there's no this, there's no that. Mm. And I, I pick bits and pieces and put it all together and create some sort of illusion that I've understood something. Yep. And then I've just made myself into you know a wrong path there and, and, and it creates more lack of whatever yes you know. yeah. yeah no that's very common and I see that that's happened that happens for many many people yep okay now did many of you have a look at the world's viewpoint versus your viewpoint when it came to faith what did you find in that uh, analysis Catherine down I just thought, thought about that with God's laws and I was thinking, well, <clears throat> the difference between God's laws and our laws. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, you just with parking, you go to one town and you park 45 degrees nose in, you go yeah. to another place and you park 45 degrees back in yeah. or you go to parallel parking and some of them have both of them yeah. and if you make a mistake you can get fined for it yeah. and if you don't pay the fine you get put in jail yeah. and <laughs> whereas God's truth and, and faith and yeah. with faith and, and everything like that and faith in God's laws in faith in God's laws yep. well you know it, it, if you're um, in one town well it's the you've same it, it, it's, it's, yes you've just got to feel the emotion yeah. now if you go to the next town you don't have to turn three somersaults and jump in the air <laughs> yeah. the, it's, it's just the same. same it doesn't change that's right yeah so that's what and I isn't that wonderful about. 
Yeah. yeah. So, so the world creates all these different laws, as, and, and and that is something that's quite confusing, isn't it? In the end, you got to learn this law, learn that law, and and nowadays there's like millions of laws on the planet. There's millions of human laws. In in the in Australia alone, there's tens of thousands of laws. Most of which we probably don't know, right? <laughs> yeah. Obviously, many are based on what I would classify as logic, but remember. What's the problem with logic, given all of this equation? Well, often we're not very logical <laughs> because we're already carrying around a whole heap of emotional baggage from our childhood and applying that uh, uh, into our logic. So that's, that's an issue. So Rita, thanks. So <clears throat> I have basically lost my faith what the world saw as being good, like I grew up as a being good, yep. yeah, yep. doing all the good things from the gr growing up Catholic and from the world's from the world perspective, yeah, yep. giving donation and giving yep. ten percent or five percent and yep. and all that stuff. Yep. And I'm really lost because now I realize, or I realized that some time ago, it's all facade. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say a swear word, yeah. but I didn't say, but it also starts with F. Yeah. And I was so in facade, so my children <laughs> didn't, couldn't even say S-H-I-T. <laughs> so, so, yeah. You're allowed to say it. <laughs> Am I allowed? My children couldn't even say yeah. shit. Yeah. So, so, yeah. F so much in facade I was and so good. Yeah. Such a good mum I was, yeah. 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 So the only times I could say, I told them the only time you can say shit in the living room if I change Lisa Snappy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I had all those logical reasons, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that was all my life. Yeah. And now yeah. it's all, all all wrong, but I haven't found the faith in God. Yeah. And the other faith, so I'm. So so, I'm, so then you, you sort you of you say I have all that rage, and I have to find even that rage. I haven't like. Um, you sort What's of that see then. Da I'm Diana, sure. Diane has found her rage, but I haven't. Yeah, yeah. And you, and then, then you're all at sea, aren't you, with your faith? It's sort of like, oh, I don't know what to have faith in now. Do I have faith in this or do I have faith in that? And in the end, a person with no faith in anything just gets pushed around with everything. And this is what I've noticed in your life, Rita. You're getting pushed around by spirits. You know, day, moment by moment, one day they one day influence you to do something nice, and the next day they influence you to do something wrong, and 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 each way you don't know whether it's right or wrong, really. And and this is the problem: is that we get influenced not only by spirits but people on earth to 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 do things that they think are right, and we just go and do that, and we just go and do that, and we just go without having any faith that, that there is any other course of action we can take. So, Louise, you wanna? Um, just with regard to the world's view of faith, um, mm -hmm. generally they don't believe in the law of attraction or consequences, except Christians True. Um, and some religions. Yes. Um, I guess Christians' view of spirituality is that I'm okay because Jesus will save my sins if I repent. Yes. And so as long as I believe and I believe in yeah. Christ's blood. So they kind of led astray a little bit in that way. Yeah. And the New Age of whom I've been a proponent, um, yeah. believes that, you know, I'm, I'm part of God and so I'm pretty cool and all that I'm stuff. already pretty perfect, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a part of God, yeah. And yeah. just that society believes that if we follow the norm, what everyone else is doing, then we're really cool and we'll be accepted. Yeah. And, yeah. So can you see that it even depended upon what group you belong to or what particular way of life you were brought up in as to what you believed was the world's viewpoint and society different societies have different viewpoints so you know you take yourself out of an australian society and, and put yourself in say a middle eastern society now there's a whole complete set of new viewpoints that you'd have to assimilate and and if you were a child you would assimilate all of those quite easily then and this is why when we take people out of one country and put them in another country there's problems because they've grown up in the other country with all these different viewpoints that they've accepted as normal and then they're in the new country and those viewpoints are no longer accepted as normal anymore and and so it's very confusing isn't it not having this consistency of viewpoint in in particularly when it comes to what is what we would classify as loving or acceptable behavior 
So, so it's acceptable in the Middle East for a woman to completely cover herself and to be subservient to the man and walk behind the man, you know, 20 feet behind the man with the children. Uh, that, that's acceptable in many parts of, the, that, of those countries. So they come here and do that and everyone looks at them strangely and it's very confusing then for them, you see, because here it's completely opposite, it's not acceptable. In fact, here it's probably more acceptable that man walks, <laughs> you know, a little behind the guy. But, um, <clears throat> but, but it's like, this is the thing, is that we have different viewpoints based on how we've been brought up. And it has a huge impact upon our ability to determine what is right and what is wrong even under those circumstances. But we still have our will and our will can still be exercised to find out what is right quite easily. Right. And particularly with the underlying law or principle of, you know, do unto others what you would like them to do unto you, the golden rule, with that particular principle, you can easily find out what is right and what is wrong, in fact. And yet, and yet the majority of us resist this process because we have all of this motion attached with our belief systems, all this worth attached to our belief systems, our personal worth attached to our belief systems, and our actions are determined greatly by other people's opinion. Yeah. Or what we could classify as the general society in which we live's opinion. And as, as I've pointed out, depending on what country of the world that is, it will differ. And that's the confusing thing. It's very confusing. Okay, well then we asked you to look at this issue of truth. Uh, or, well, no, taking action to become more loving in your life, wasn't it? What, what, what did you find? So this was an issue of the exercise of your will to love. Is the so the question, is, the question was, you know, what action do you take in your day-to-day -day life that, demonstrate, that demonstrates your desire to come, become more loving? And what did you learn in that analysis? Uh, fab things. <coughs> I found that I took action in the things that I thought were safe. Okay, so your action was a lot determined by the fear level that was triggered inside of you that you refused to feel at the time. Yeah. So if you had very little fear triggered at the time, then you'd take the action. But if you had quite a lot of fear triggered, then, then no, it was completely opposite. You'd do the unloving thing. Yeah. And I think my majority of people could probably say that. Good eh? Anything else that you saw? Thanks, Kate. If you leave your hand up, so yeah, Suzanne can keep track of you. <laughs> uh, I, I spend a bit of time on the awareness, but like to reflect and and sort of investigate, you know, what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. But then not a lot of time on the feeling part. So then it, you know, it comes to the next question about humility. Like I'm not acting on on that one. Yeah, so, so when it came to developing some awareness, you could see, yes, I can see this and I can see that, I can see this going on, I can see that going on. But when it then came to feel about those particular things going on and why they're going on, then it's like, what do I do now? Or, or, or even, do I do it now? Isn't it? You wanted to say more? Yeah, let's pass it back. Just one more thing, yeah. Like, like it, it's not re acting to resolve it. So yes. I become aware of a problem, but yep. I'm not acting to, you know, see it all the way through. Yes. And you know, this uh, particular problem that the majority of people I observe who hear divine truth actually have is, is actually causing you a lot of uh, difficulty and uh, unhappiness, actually. Because what happens is you become, you become aware of a problem, so awareness grows, and then you don't act upon that particular problem and reduce that pro problem. So, so instead of reducing the problem through the feeling of the emotion, so let's say this is happiness here, and above here is distress, right? So this is distress, and down here is happiness. What you do is you become aware of a problem which increases your distress, doesn't it? And then if you can deal with that problem, and, and if we look at the graph really, this is probably how it would happen, is that we'd become aware of the problem, use our will to deal with the problem, and eventually the problem would not exist anymore. You follow me? And then another problem become, we become aware of, and then we deal with that particular problem. So, so can you see our distress levels are not that high because we're, we're dealing with the problems that we identify. 
You follow? But what happens for the majority of us is not that. So what we do is this. We find a problem and then we sort of sit on that for a while, you know, coming to terms with that. <laughs> All right. And then somebody or the law of attraction or some event causes us to see another problem. We go, oh, okay, there's another problem. And we sit with that for a bit, <laughs> becoming aware of that. And then we see another problem, and then another problem, and then another problem. And what's happening now is our distress, our personal distress and unhappiness levels are building, and we're not releasing anything, so they have nowhere to go. So we become more and more and more and more and more distressed. And when the more distress you're in, the more anger you begin to express, the more fear you live in, and so forth. So what happens is we finish up expressing a lot of anger and we start expressing a lot of fear and we start... And, and then we start avoiding many of the... Remember we talked about the four things we need to embrace, faith, truth, action and emotion. We finish up choosing to avoid those particular things because the more truth we get, the more aware we become. And all we find is that, ah, oh, uh, receiving truth, so remember this is the reception of truth that causes this growing awareness, but because we're not releasing anything emotionally, our distress level is also increasing. And this is what I notice many of you doing. Your distress level increases and increases and increases and increases until it gets so intense that you make a huge decision. And you know what that decision is? To not have anything to do with it anymore. To not do that process of wanting truth anymore. That's a huge decision. Right? And this huge decision you make, you don't realise, but it's, it's one of the most negative choices you can make in your entire life. And remember Sonia, in the channelings that we did pre this event, remember Sonia talked about the choice to actually make a negative decision. This is one of the main reasons why people hear divine truth and then abandon it. You follow? It's because the distress levels increase as more truth. If you exercise a bit of faith, you'll discover some more truth. You ex and, and, but if you don't take action and you don't deal with your emotion, what happens is the truth, you get presented more truth and 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 now you're starting to feel like so overwhelmed with truth and still not choosing to feel any emotion. Now you're getting to the point where you could easily make the choice to just abandon truth altogether. And many do. Right. You, you think I've probably spoken to 20 or 30,000 people in the last few years directly. And that's not on the internet, but that's just directly. And yet of those 20 or 30,000 people, how many are even listening now? Usually two or three thousand people at the most. So one, one, that tells me that 90% of people who hear divine truth eventually get into the state where they no longer wish to hear it. Right? And so they abandon it. Even though right at the beginning it, 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 it caused joy in their soul. That's why they listened the personal action, this is, so this is to do with our response to personal truth, isn't it? Which is actually confronting our internal error. Yeah, and this is what normally happens. And of course, that now defines our will to love. So now we have no will to exercise faith. We have no will to find out more truth. We have no will to take action on anything that we've heard or listened to. And we have no desire to feel any emotion. So we revert back to our old way of life. Right? And many of you are actually in danger of that because of your desire to avoid emotion. You see? Yeah? You want to say, Sherry? Come over. And then down to Peter on this side. Sorry. Down to Peter on this side. Thanks. See. Uh, yesterday when I sat down to do my homework, um, I was basically had an event happen in the morning that had caused me distress. Yeah. But I was like, no, I've got to do my homework. Yeah. So I sat down and I was looking at my homework going, 
Um, What's my homework? <laughs> yeah. I could choose to have some faith here that I can feel this. I yeah. could choose to take action and I could, you know, and then I put my homework down and yeah. made the choice to go and feel something yeah. and thought I'll get to my homework. Uh, this, this is putting the homework into practice. Well, this practice. is the homework. This is the homework. <laughs> exactly. But that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It is, uh, you know, we need to treat a lot of this homework, instead of treating it as an intellectual exercise, we need to treat it as a life exercise, which is completely different, isn't it? Yeah. Peter? Yeah, that's exactly what's happened to me. Yep. And like just in the last few days, I've. You mean this is what's happened to you? Yeah, totally. Yep. And I've got more and more angry and more and more resistive, as you know. Yeah. And like in the last few days, I realized like I have a direct correlation with feeling emotion and absolute terror. Yes. And it's like, well, why am I going to feel my emotion? Because I'm absolutely terrified. So yep. it's like, yeah. So yeah, it's sort of linked it all up of why I've gone down that path. Yeah. It's been awesome to see what's yep. actually happening. Yeah, so I see this path as quite a dangerous road for many of you. Many of you, if you choose to remain in this state, will abandon God's truth, but then have to pick it up many, probably even potentially centuries later. And, 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 and then you'll have another emotion to address quite intensely, and that's the emotion of regret. Right. And so yep. there's a real panic that comes over you too in that high distress point too. Like yeah. you just like and it's like and even to the fact like with me it was like, no, I'm not angry and you're just like <laughs> going ballistic. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not even aware, are you, in the in this highly distressed state. It's sort of like the imperative becomes just avoid, just avoid, just avoid. Just That's, shut it down. Just shut, shut it, it down. down. Just get away, get away. And, and, and most people do not understand the reason why they leave God's truth. They don't. And it's because they've become so distressed at hearing it that now you know the distress and, and unwilling to feel through the process that their distress will now determine their action well i even noticed in that place of absolute distress i can't even hear little tiny truths in that place like no. let alone the big stuff it's very hard to hear anything you could say that this distress is a state of panic actually and what do you do when you're panicked you don't hear much you don't act logically um, you just do what the panic dictates. That's, that's it, isn't it? And, and this is where I see many, if you keep receiving truth, and many of you have taught yourself now to control the reception of truth so you can control the panic, which is not what I advise you to do. What you do need to do at some point is get into this, uh, f this panic feeling and just allow yourself to experience it, right? that there's all these things that you've realized truth about and you, and you just feel hopeless or you feel like it's never going to be able to be dealt with and, and the need to feel that as an overwhelming emotion is important the problem is is that if you don't feel it it will build it's going to build to higher intensities you follow so this is a big big thing so if we come down to barb <coughs> Hey, Jesus, I agree with everything you say on that. Great diagram. It's too bad if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Great diagram. And before yeah. you run it, rub it off, rub it off yeah. before, for our transcribing team and the diagrammer, can you write on the step um, sitting on it or something like that so it completes <laughs> the diagram? Yeah, so, so here in this, in this area here, where it's where we're not acting and we're not feeling anything. We're just we're sitting in this place where we've just become aware of the truth and, and you know, we're very uncomfortable with this new developed awareness. So you see so this plateau, you could call it, this area here is the area where we're basically still deciding. We're still deciding whether we're going to feel about it or do something about it or act upon it or what are we going to do and and because we're afraid either way we, we, we don't want to act upon the emotion because we've been taught that that's not a good thing to do but we don't want to feel the emotion because we feel that that's not a good thing to do either and so what we finish up doing is it's a, it, it is our state of inaction right so this plateau becomes our state of inaction where we don't do anything about it but the problem with inaction, no action, 
is that is that the law of attraction is still operational <laughs> more awarenesses are going to come right so so the problem with be, be, being inactive and not addressing the particular issue is that sooner or later another issue is going to be exposed on top of it <laughs> sooner or later yep if we go up to gary at the back <coughs> yeah um, that panic thing i think that's what i've been in but my question is because um, I do the overwhelm and, and disillusionment, but um, how do you know uh, whether that's a manufactured emotion or or a, um, a emotion of deception? Um, well, what I'm suggesting is that anything up in this area is all manufactured emotion. It's all our own choice to get to that point because we refused to address the actual emotion that we identified down here. So, so all of this emotion up here is in a way manufactured. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's emotion that you will feel. You feel distressed, panicked, uh, you know, overwhelmed. You want to run away and all those feelings. Yeah. They are all feelings that you, you could have avoided actually if you had chosen differently once you identified the particular emotion down here. All right, so you follow? Yeah, so it's being open to the... To more truth about yeah so the, yeah. the the time to solve this particular problem is not when it gets to that point yeah, that's, that's where i am <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. and this is you can solve it when it gets to that point like that's what i had to do <laughs> i'm recommending to you that it's not the best course of action you can you once you identify an emotional injury you can begin exercising faith you can begin wanting more truth you can you can start taking action on the particular issue and you could work through the blockages you have to feeling your emotion on that issue immediately which would stop this this no action period and then another truth hitting you and a no action period and another truth hitting you wouldn't it mm. it would stop it and the key is to you know th this is what i see many of you doing you're creating your own distress you see is is the point of this diagram you're creating your own distress and then you get so distressed that now what do you want to do nothing you want to run away from the whole thing you know and that and that uh, also is going to severely influences the choice you make at that particular moment obviously here making this choice here is a lot easier than making the choice here making the choice here you've got this this terrible overwhelming terror now to address Right. Making the choice here, it's a lot more simple. So, you know, so if we just ask the question, you know, I'm feeling overwhelmed and panicked and I feel that and then ask, oh, well, what, what's the next truth that regarding? No, uh, when you're feeling overwhelmed and panicked is because you're refusing to accept the previous truths. That's what I'm suggesting. Once you get to the point where you're overwhelmed and panicked, it's because you're refusing to actually process your way through the previous truths that you've already received. So what I would do myself is go back to the previous truth and go, okay, this, I've got now this build-up of truth which I have, have determined that I'm not going to feel about and that's my problem. So let's go back to those truths. What are those truths that I've realised? So the first one might be that I have an addiction with women. Right, that might be the first one. The second one might be, uh, I have an addiction to work to get my worth. Totally, yeah. And, you know, and so forth and yeah. so forth. Yeah. And, and, and not feeling each one of them causes the panic to build. Right, so, so what I would do is go back and go, okay, what are all the things that I've learned? You know, what personal truth have I learned in this process that I haven't processed? Because that's my problem here. I'm now in a state of panic feeling like I can't do anything and the reason why is because there's a whole heap of personal truth that I haven't processed from the past, from, from my past experience in my analysis of what's going on. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that, yeah thanks. If we come down to Phoebe. Okay. Is that the law of compensation that that's creating the panic yes that's right actually um as you will learn in a law in our law discussions this state is actually the law of compensation at work from your choices to do these other things earlier it's dead right does the law of compensation like the feelings 
just this general like does it create feelings that are relevant to the truths that you're avoiding frequently or is it just yes a general feeling well like, well you know obviously in this state fear is one of the truths i'm avoiding otherwise i would probably process my emotion right so it's a rant so obviously fear. i'm now through the law of compensation is going if i receive more truth and i refuse to address it because of my fear of emotion then i'll receive more truth and i'll have a stronger fear of emotion and so forth until my fear of emotion becomes so overwhelming that now i'm just in a panic emotionally and that's the law of compensation at work because i refused to address the earlier states do you follow me it's like it's like the law of compensation at work regarding your lack of love of self means that you take an action that was a lack of love of self you have some kind of negative effect as a result of that lack of love of self and then you feel really bad about the negative effect of the lack of love of self and then most of you decide well that's because you didn't um, do something that you should have done for somebody else instead of seeing it as a lack of love of self so you take another action and the and the, and the enhanced pain and this is something we're going to talk about today the enhanced pain is a part of the law of compensation trying to correct you and say no that's not the right direction right so every step where the distress increases really what Scott's saying to you is look you're not taking the right direction here right now I'm not saying that you won't not feel overwhelming emotion when you even just try to process this first emotion because you probably will that's why you're avoiding it right but you don't have to get into these terrible panic distress states that's the compensatory effect of the avoidance of the process you follow but that's a choice that we we have to recognize we're making choices making decisions yeah now i've already blown our time with regard to this period it's uh it there's so much we could say about these things isn't there in terms of what how we actually act what i notice is that many people continue to get it themselves into these kind of states and the reason why they get themselves into those states is because they're refusing to act many many months or even years earlier on other things Right. and eventually you'll get in that state and I'm saying to you I guarantee to you that if you do that you will get into that state and it's highly likely you will abandon God's truth highly likely in that state so that's an issue we face I have to finish now right because it's uh, you won't get 10 minutes break otherwise okay so what we'll do now is just have a 10 minute break and then we'll go to our sessions today about what we're going to learn today